Hello my epic armory and cheers. Welcome to another week of the classes of Pantheon and in case you missed it we've been doing a little series here on the classes of Pantheon and each week I've been choosing a role and covering the classes contained within that role. I posted the links below in the description for the first couple weeks. We had an introduction video. We did the healers and crowd control. We did the tanks and this week we get to do the DPS. Also in the description below is a link to the timestamp for each DPS class covered. In case you want to skip ahead, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would watch the whole thing. Anyway, without further ado, here is week number four in the classes of Pantheon, covering the one, the only, DPS. Alrighty, so the DPS in Pantheon are the Rogue, the Monk, the Ranger, the Summoner, the wizard and I'm going to cover them all based off the sub roles so we have melee ranged and magical they will be grouped up in those classes let's kick it off with the melee this next class is one of blisters favorites in any MMO and I know a lot of DPS players like a good rogue class that's right we're covering the rogue right now the rogue is locked into the dark mirror the dwarf the elf the halfling the human the gnome or the scar races and you can wear cloth leather or light male armor they get to equip daggers as you would expect throwing knives and most one-handed weapons so I guess the question here would be is this a rogue that we're used to or are they much much cooler well to start off I'll let you know that this class does in fact have stealth and invisibility in Pantheon stealth is called sneak and enables silent movement when behind an enemy. Invisibility comes in a couple of flavors. The first being Shadow Walk, which will consume mana over time, and Shadow Dwell, which will require you to evolve your Shadow Walk so it no longer costs mana over time. So that hits the two major roguelike abilities, and the next one might get you a little more excited. Poison Craft. This is a cornerstone of the rogue's repertoire and they get better with it as they level up. Finishing off the rogue, I noticed their typical backstab and dual wield abilities, but also noted a few interesting ones like length of rope, which lets you rope down to your party and lets them climb up. They do have some potion abilities like flash bomb, which will end combat for you and make you activate shadow walk, and sleeping powder, which puts you and the enemies to sleep for 24 seconds but damage will wake anybody those are just a couple examples but i really like the direction the rogue class is taking in this game and it really feels like a true rogue class with some excellent abilities that flush it out nicely and allow for poison bombs and stealth i think this makes a very nice rounded out rogue all right we're gonna jump back onto the monk and I want to quickly recap the races here in case you skipped the tank section on the monk or you didn't watch the tank video yet. The monk is locked into the Archai and that's how the commenters told me to say it. So if that is wrong, blame them. Anyway, the Archai, the Dark Mirror, the Human, or the Scar races. They can wear cloth, light leather, or monk specific martial armor and can use hand to hand martial weapons most blunt weapons or a shuriken. Just to recap real quick, the monk is actually an off tank and a DPS. They do have some tanking ability, but they seem to really revolve around DPS. So the monk seems to follow the path you would think a monk would typically follow for a DPS class with abilities like flurry punch. They have a few skills that seem to allow for some burst DPS which I think really helps the off tank because they can burn down their mob that they're trying to tank. And one of these examples is Blast of Chakra and a combo that you can do called Setting Sun Kick and Rising Moon Kick that can boost your strength and do high damage to an enemy. As is normal with the monk class, they are focused on single target burst DPS it seems. They compare it to, well, you probably guessed it, a monk in every other MMO. The only thing missing here are positional abilities such as hitting from the back or side. But I do think this is a very interesting class that can do some tanking, burn the enemies down, 
could do just straight up DPS. I don't know if they're going to be able to do builds or not, or if they, the classes are just the way they are, but we'll see more to come later. Interesting monk class for sure. Next up, we have the Ranger, which is typically one of my favorite classes. And this version seems to excite me, well, more than a little. Why? Well, I'm going to get to that in a moment. First off, we got to pick the races, armor, and weapons for the Ranger. They are locked into the Elf, the Halfling, and human races. Yes, just three. They wear cloth, leather, and light mail. And guess what? They equip bows, crossbows, and one-handed weapons. Yes, most one-handed weapons. Why? Well, because, and this is why I'm excited, the Ranger is actually a melee slash ranged DPS class with the ability to weave between the two with elegant ease. More on that soon, but to kick their abilities off, we get another great feature. They deploy animals to assist with things like Ferret Scout and Hawk Scout, which allows you to scout ahead. They also have Veil Hawks and Veil Striders, which carry you to a target location or grant you increased movement speed. And lastly, the Thunderpaw or Panthra's ability, which bring enemies into combat to help it's kind of cool to have sort of like a summoner vibe to it with just what i've listed here you can consider me sold on this class but there's still more to come we get some abilities like hidden snare to lay out traps and a lot of utility and support with flare tracking and forge just to point out a few without diving deep into the actual combat stuff to note there is some nice range abilities here and a nice withdrawal ability to get you from melee combat back into range quickly, which makes sense if this class is supposed to go between melee and range with elegant ease. To quickly wrap this up, I'm just blown away by this class and I cannot wait to try it out. It sounds so fun to weave between melee and range with the ability of pets and some support abilities. I am just 100% sold. Well, I think anyway, check us out next week. We're going to go over our favorite classes in Pantheon. So I can't give it away yet. Or did I already? On to our magical classes. We kick it off with the Summoner. Again, sorry for this, but I do not have footage for this class, sadly. And man, does this class look deep. I'll try to keep this to a minimum. The races we have are Dark Mirror, Elf, Human, and Gnome. They can only wear cloth and equip one-handed piercing or blunt weapons, two-handed staffs, and certain shields. So the summoner is able to spawn summons as you would expect, and they are called Archimentals, and they are categorized into four classes based on the element they are bound to. As you level up, so will your Archimental. You can choose which abilities your Archimental has active, and you can create special weapons and armor for them, and these items all have attributes and Archimental specializes in certain attributes so you can beef them up so you're gonna want to min min max your weapons here seems like a very great and deep system first off we're gonna cover the water arc mental called undyne this is your healing summon but heals only benefit you and or another arc mental this is also the only arc mental you can summon at the same time as another next up wind arc mental called zephyr this summon is your burst close range DPS class. Next up, Fire Archimental called Fury. This summon deals magical damage to enemies, and as you would expect, seems kind of like the Mage class. So, AoE damage. And lastly, we have the Earth Archimental called Titan, or Titan if you hang out with my crew of scrubs. As you would expect, this is your tank summon. Now, they all come with their own abilities, but to keep this on time and on track, I will skip all of those, but check out the website because there is plenty to see here. Looking at the rest of the abilities, there are some cool ones, but the ones that stick out majorly is Escape Portal, which lets you make a portal at one point and then at another time pop it again to connect the portals. I'm guessing there's a range here, but very, very handy. This class is much, much deeper than I covered here and probably why we don't have any footage yet. Please check out the Pantheon website to dive deeper into it. I put the link in the description below. 
And we are almost to the end. Our last DPS class is the last magical DPS class. And it is called the Wizard. The Wizard is locked into the Archai, Dark Mirror, Elf, Human, or Gnome. They wear cloth only and can equip one-handed piercing, one-handed blunt, and certain one-handed edged weapons. Also, they can equip two-handed staffs and certain shields. Well... Another class that is good news, bad news, guys. This seems like your typical straight-up mage class with, again, some cool abilities added in. The wizard will wield fire, cold, or arcane magics and, per usual, seem to be able to deal lots of AoE damage like Fiery Surge. We also get to see something called Spell Weaving. This will require you to find skull fragments while adventuring and will permanently give you strong spells that are actually instant cast and cost no mana. Here's an example of spell weaving. Your base spell, called Smolder, requires nothing. But once you find a Char fragment, you can now cast Char, which again will instant cast and cost no mana. And then you can upgrade Char to the next step, which is Engulf, which requires an Engulf fragment. The big question I had was, do you waste a fragment when you weave spells? And from the looks of it, the answer is no. I'm hoping that elemental resistances will also be a thing in this game, as I think this will make this class a lot harder to play, maybe a lot funner to play. Anyway, some cold spells uh, you would expect from the mage are going to freeze or slow enemies, and arcane spells seem to do the typical arcane bolt type of spell damage. Again. This is basically a cookie cutter mage with some spell weaving that makes it pretty interesting and fun. Otherwise, expect your straight up typical mage class here. Not a bad thing though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is your DPS of Pantheon. Throw some comments below. Let me know which DPS you're liking the best. What do you think of all these different DPS classes? Some of them are cookie cutter. Some of them are far from it. So let me know what you think of that. Also, get ready next week as the three boys of Less Than Epic discuss all the classes from Pantheon and which ones are our favorite, which ones we think we'll be playing. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of that video coming out, which again will be next week. But also check out all our other videos here at Less Than Epic as we cover a wide range of stuff. Thank you for checking us out. I'll catch you next week and get good scrubs. Hey, it's Ratted here. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. We put out multiple new videos each week and we appreciate all of your support. Thanks for watching everyone and cheers.